Everything kind of starts when you're young and you have a lot of paths in life you can take, but this was my path to transform how trucking works, everything about it from the ground up. America was built on the backs of diesels. It's really incredible. I love the history of diesels. It was developed primarily because it was more efficient and stronger than the alternatives at the time. And now we face the same problems. How do we build something that's stronger, more efficient and cleaner? And that's our obligation. It's our future. How do we take the past and improve on it? And that's what the Nikola one does. Yeah, I've met a lot of dreamers. Sometimes they have great ideas, but they can't ever get it off the ground. So when I first met Trevor, it was, it was pretty exciting to see that he actually had more than just on paper. He had a whole engineering group that had spent a lot of time putting this product together. We've built something that no one else thought was possible. And we've done it with a team of passionate, driven, young entrepreneurs, all put into one incredible team here at Nikola. Well, anytime there's new technologies in the market that we think will be a game changer, we tend to try to participate with those manufacturers that's coming to the market with them. And we tend to try to help them understand what's needed in, in our industry, because a lot of people will build a product and miss the mark. And contacting Trevor when, when he first made his announcement and then seeing his reaction to to some of the suggestions that we're offering. He's been, been very receptive. You know, I have no ownership in the company, but I can tell you I'm, I'm pretty excited about how the company's moving forward, how the product's coming to the market. If something can be done, it should be done. We've been able to prove it works. Now it's time for us as a company to take the products out on the road, show that they can outperform a diesel in every application, in every situation, and change the philosophy of an entire society. I think there's going to be so many changes that once a driver gets in that truck, it's going to be a different world for it. Going to batteries as, a, as opposed to diesel, being emissions free, having a vehicle that doesn't require all the maintenance that today's vehicles do, having a vehicle that's more comfortable for the driver. But it's also going to create a different world for us, the owners, uh, that have to keep these guys on the road for days at a time. And this could be that game changer that we're all looking for to enhance the availability of good quality, safe drivers. This is to all the thinkers and the inventors and the entrepreneurs that didn't stop after their first failure. It was the same thing here. We failed, we failed, we failed, and then we succeeded. Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Link, Chief Engineer, Nikola Motor Company. Thank you. Good evening and welcome. It's so great to see all of you here. And thank you for those who are joining us online. My name is Kevin Link. I'm the chief engineer for Nikola Motor Company. We certainly come a long way from where we started when we first started designing this truck in our CEO's basement. And I'm happy and excited to share with you this huge milestone for our company and for the future of trucking. It's my distinct pleasure and honor to introduce our CEO and founder, Trevor Milton. Wow, well, a good crowd out here tonight. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, this is a really incredible time. Uh, one of my favorite quotes, uh, quotes in the world. It just, just a couple of days ago, one of our users sent it off to us, and it just really just shocked me. It was everything I've been trying to capture and explain to people for years and years, and that is the electric light did not come from continuous improvements of candles. That's a really hard concept to try to explain to a big Fortune 500 company or a Fortune 100 or or even a Fortune 1000. It's very, very difficult. Um, it takes a complete redesign from the ground up, and most of the time, big companies can't take those risks, primarily because the, if there was a failure, it would affect a company of that size uh, much more than a smaller company like ours. And that's one of the great advantages that we have as an entrepreneur, and one of the tasks in life that we have as entrepreneurs is to be able to take risks that no one else thought was possible. 
that no one ever thought would, they could, that they could ever do. The consequences would be too great, but we took it and we achieved. It's a really incredible uh, um, story of our, of, of our time. Um, I'm going to go through a couple things. Some of you guys saw me pull up in the Nikola Zero. We're going to be talking about a lot of really incredible products tonight. Some people know a lot about Nikola. Some people are just learning. Uh, we, I want to obviously thank everyone that's live streaming all over the world. We have people all the way from here tonight, all the way from Norway, Germany, um, Australia, all the way over America, South America. It's incredible groups come in from all over the world for this event. So I appreciate everyone. We've got a lot of really cool products to talk about tonight. And, uh, and this, is the, this is the beginning of it. And this is a really, really, really fun time. Some of you may know we have, we have a few main products. We have the electric truck and then we have a, an electric off-road vehicle. The reason why I show this is because it shows how innovative we are. If you look at this uh, Nikola Zero, this is an off-road UTV, much like a, a Polaris Razor or uh, some of you guys have ever ridden one of those. We have, set, we have two different battery packs for this. One's a 72 kilowatt hour pack and one's 107 kilowatt hour packs. Let me give you an idea. Our battery pack has more energy density and can, has more energy density more power than a, than a uh, Tesla 100D, $150,000 car. That's on a Nikola Zero, all sitting in the bottom of that frame. That just gives you a preview of how some innovation and technology uh, allows us to pave the way for new improvements. I couldn't be here without a lot of the people that paved the way for us. I'm incredibly grateful. I get asked all the time, is Tesla your competitor? Absolutely not. We're not affiliated with Tesla, but they have paved the way for many of us to be able to achieve, and I'm very grateful for that. My team is uh, incredibly extraordinary. We've been able to pack so much energy into that. That's 300 miles on an off-road vehicle, completely silent. And that's one of the things I love. That'll be coming out um, right around about the end of next year into, into dealerships and showrooms. Some of you guys have uh, read the press release this morning. Some of you may not have heard yet, but it's, uh, I'm beyond grateful and excited. We signed, a, signed an... Um, an agreement that was for the entire United States, Canada, and parts of Mexico with Ryder Systems, Inc. Ryder has over 800 locations that will be servicing, selling, and warrantying our vehicles throughout the entire continental United States, the lower 48, all up into Canada and into Mexico. And I'm extremely proud to, to be able to have that. That shows you a little bit about how incredible our product is. Um, we've totaled now almost uh, a little over $4 billion in pre-orders, which I think is a pretty incredible task to be able to achieve. Um, there's different lease programs that'll be coming out that the value can change based upon the length of the lease and different pricing. Some of that information I know a lot of people are gonna want right now, that'll be coming out in the near future with us and Ryder in conjunction to make sure we're on message and that we have the right information being given out. This is really incredible, I'm really proud of it. So okay, you have this big service network now. You've got the, one of the greatest brands in America. Now, how do you, how do you fill all your trucks? Where are you gonna fill all your trucks? It's another, another one of the really incredible things I get to talk about tonight is all of our stations. Here at Nikola, we are announcing that we're gonna be building stations across the country. A lot of people don't know how these stations work, so I wanna tell you about them. There's a lot of ways to create hydrogen. Hydrogen's the most, uh, um, it's, it's really the, the only fuel out there doesn't create any emissions or byproducts. Incredible, the only byproducts is water. So as this truck goes down the road, the only thing coming out of this truck will be drips of water. And I think everyone around the world is gonna be uh, cheering for that. Um, there's, there's, as you can see up on here, there's, uh, there's a lot of ways you can create it through solar. You can, you can on-site convert it to uh, hydrogen through electrolysis, or you can use other methods like steam reform. With that technology, even with steam reform, you can utilize all the other emissions that come off of it for like road tar and other products. So it's, it's about as emission free as you can get of a, of a fuel. We liquefy that hydrogen, we transport it all across the country and we, dispense, we, we store it into uh, gigantic containers and dispense it to trucks. This is a really cool process because this allows us to transport over 10,000 kilograms, sometimes even more, depends on the size of the trailer at one time. So you can imagine, you know, one truck offloads that station, it's gonna last a long time, even with a lot of truck traffic through that station. So this is how we actually do it. This is the process of the hydrogen stations. A lot of people have asked, how are you gonna get hydrogen all over the country? Well, this is it. Um, imagine pulling up to a station, instead of seeing $250, $355 for a, for a gallon of diesel, you see zero as a Nikola customer. And that's what you get. You have, when, you, when you buy or purchase or lease a Nikola truck, a Nikola One, you get an entire million miles of fuel included into that. 
That's incredible because we're really the only company that has been vertically integrated from the beginning to the end. We own our own hydrogen facility that we're building. We own our own plant, our own conversion, our own distribution, and now our own manufacturing of the truck. A lot of people have asked, why'd you do that? Well, once again, it wasn't about improving on the candle. It was about totally redesigning what that meant and to become a, a, a flashlight. And that's what we did. We've, uh, we've built, we built this vertical integration plan and it allows us to control the cost of fuel. There's no variables in that with exception to taxes. But outside of that, it doesn't matter what happens in the world. We control our own fuel. We control our own prices. Now we can deliver fuel to those customers without having to worry about how do you hedge your diesel bets for seven years out or five years out or three years out. This is the really fun part. 364 stations are going up with Nikola. This will give the driver the ability to go in any direction and pass more than seven stations, sometimes up to 25 stations, without having to refill with hydrogen. You'll get over 1,200 miles on a charge, I mean on a charge or a fill up with hydrogen. Essentially, you never have to plug in with this truck, but the hydrogen charges the batteries as you go. Um, so imagine having a, you know, you have a Tesla car or whatever and you plug in at night. Well, imagine have that power plant with you everywhere you go and you never have to plug in again. That's what this truck is. It eliminates it. And on heavy duty trucks, it makes a lot of sense to do that because you have a lot more space than a small car. So these are the maps. These will be up available on our website after this event is over. You'll be able to see the list of the cities. This will give people the ability to fill. We're going to start building these stations um, in 2019. They're going to be rolled out slowly as we, um, with fleets that are ordering our, our trucks and along with other customers. So you won't have all of them at once, but these are all ones in the plan. Now we'll have business development managers that will be handling the development of every one of these stations, and I'm really proud of that. So say, people say, okay, now you got this, you got the, one of the greatest brands in America, you got Rider Systems servicing all your trucks in 800 locations. When, you know, a lot of people say, oh, Nicole can't do that. We did it. Now they say, how are you going to fuel your truck? That's our rollout plan with the, with the stations. Well, now, you know, now comes the question, how are you going to build these trucks? That's the hardest part. That's the one that takes a little bit more time. Uh, we have a great partner and investor in our company from Fitzgerald. They uh, come from the Fitzgerald Glider Kit family. They build about six to 9,000 trucks a year right now. They'll be handling the first 5,000 trucks for us and continuing uh, to build those trucks for us in the future. This will allow us to avoid a lot of the capital expenditure that's necessary. It's not as advanced as a massive manufacturing facility. But it's, once again, we're doing things a different way. My goal is to try to build those trucks, build them right, build them safe, test the living heck out of them, make sure they're very, very safe for the drivers. And over that period of time, over the next four to five years, we'll be building our own manufacturing plant. Over a billion dollars will be invested in this facility. The body in white, which is essentially the entire frame system, the, the panels, everything else that goes along with it without the trim, will be completely done robotically. This will allow us to avoid a lot of the, a lot of the mistakes that can happen for safety. Um, and also for production efficiency as well. Then we'll bring the people in, then they'll trim it. They'll make it beautiful. They'll put everything else in it and it'll come off the assembly line. And uh, this is just a, it's a really fun project for us. So we're gonna be announcing where this manufacturing plant will be um, sometime around the middle of next year. So it's gonna be pretty incredible. We've got multiple states we've been talking to about where are we gonna locate this, uh, this manufacturing plant. That announcement will come sometime around two, in the middle of 2017 next year. I have another really fun um, job here tonight. I get to tell you guys about the Nikola too. So we have the sleeper. A lot of sleepers around the country, you see them driving on the roads. Uh, there's a lot of fleets that say, what about your day cab? And that's where the Nikola 2 comes in. The Nikola 2 is a day cab that has the same performances as the sleeper. The only difference is it does not have a sleeper, so it's gonna be a little less expensive, more maneuverable, and it's absolutely incredible. It's got rear steering built in. This means you can take that truck and do this with it. It's the only semi-truck like it in the world that's mass produced. I'm sure some garage guys have done some cool stuff. So it's my joy to be able to tell you a little bit about the Nikola too. Here's the actual rendering of what it's gonna look like. And after you see this truck come to life here tonight, you guys will understand that what we show you, we can actually deliver on. And that's the neatest part about Nikola. There's a couple pictures I wanna be able to show you about the Nikola 2, so you're welcome to take all the pictures you guys want. It's got a panoramic view all the way around. It's really beautiful. It's got better vision. It's got collision avoidance systems. Um, a, lot of real, a lot of really cool stuff. Same performance of the truck, so 1,200 miles between fill-ups and uh, we'll have the stations throughout the country to fill them. Give you a couple shots. Right there, it's good. 
This next segment we get into is really cool. It's called Nikola Shipments. This truck is by far the most state-of-the-art truck ever built in history. I'm proud to say that. You guys will be able to later on come in and see this, uh, these displays on here. This thing is mind-boggling. There's four massive displays, and this thing is uh, really, really incredible. Nikola Shipments is the ability for every freight broker in the country to upload their freight to our system, have our drivers pick them up. Much like a, an Uber for a taxi, you'll be able to see the reviews of the drivers. This is really cool because we're vertically integrated. 100% from the beginning to the manufacturing to the stations. This will allow someone to be able to pick a route. Let's say, let's say they're in Los Angeles and they want to go to New York. Our truck will run millions of calculations and tell them with every single freight system, give them five or six different options. It can run different routes, different freeways based upon weather conditions. This will tell them the most lucrative route from LA to New York. We're the only truck in the world that can do that. And this is awesome because it's built right into the truck. They pay nothing for this. My goal was literally to revolutionize the trucking industry. And by doing this, we have all the answers in the Nikola One, it's built right in. Not only is that awesome, but in production, you're gonna see us come out with, the largest screen in any truck is 21 inches. And the reason why the screen is so important is because it gives the driver the ability to navigate all these different loads. He can see every load within his city that's available. He can choose to just keep on picking up loads. He doesn't have to worry about a dispatcher. Doesn't have to worry about anything. He can live video chat with a, um, with the, the, the shipper, he can continue on and, uh, and, and choose multiple routes. He can say, okay, I want to go from Salt Lake to Colorado and back. Our system will give them the most lucrative route from Salt Lake to Colorado within the time frame he wants to get. It literally takes away so much of the back-end work that is so difficult for owner-operators. This will potentially be able to change the owner-operator's um, income by up to over 50%, which is really awesome. I want to go through some of this. Gives you a couple snapshots. This is actually in our truck right now. You'll be able to see it when you get in the truck later tonight. You'll see it up on the screens. They're fully functioning screens. Really incredible. We will have a, a chain on the, on the seats to prevent people from coming in just for the safety. I don't want someone to end up doing something and driving this truck off the stage. So it's a little expensive, okay? You could probably buy a jet with what it costs to build this thing. So we're gonna try to keep people from uh, driving off. But this thing fully functions and works, which is really incredible. This will take a few years to roll out. This is not like an overnight thing. This will take testing, it'll take work, it'll take great partners that we have, but soon we'll be passing billions of dollars of freight through our systems and allowing people to be able to actually earn a better income. A Couple more shots, this just kind of shows you the idea of uh, all the different shipments and options from say Los Angeles all the way up to, uh, um, all the way up to Salt Lake City. Give you different types of loads, you can narrow down from flatbeds to, to reefers to whatever else you want. This is really to give power back to the drivers and give them the ability to really see the, how they can, they can make more money in their pocket, um, even if they don't have the skills. Okay, so you, you move into the Nikola One. It's, uh, this, is my, uh, this is kind of the, the main specs of the truck that a lot of people have asked about. People say, how do you get 1,000 horsepower, 2,000 foot-pounds of torque, and 1,200-mile range? Most of the time, out of those three variables, you get one, but not all three. That's what's really cool about Nikola, is you have an electric motor on every wheel. So you have the ability to split up the distribution of the power, the tire wear, the traction, everything else. You get 2,000 foot-pounds of torque before the gear reduction, it's almost 100,000 foot-pounds of torque after gear reduction. Can you imagine pulling a 6% grade for those truck drivers, pulling a 6% grade under a full load of 80,000 pounds and doing it at 65 miles an hour? You can do that with the Nikola One. So some of the information we've come out with, we've talked about how fuel efficient the Nikola One is. This is the slide that'll probably bore some people. But some of the other people, like the critics, they wanna know how we get to these numbers. This is important. So there's 33 and a third kilowatts per kilogram of hydrogen. The fuel cell we have in the truck is 70% efficient. So imagine a diesel engine, you're, you're, much, you're much, much lower. A turbine, you're much, much lower. You're up to 70% efficient with a, with a fuel cell. Our fuel cell is a PEM. So Paul Echo, Mango, whatever, I don't know the terminology, I'll let you guys figure that out, PEM, fuel cell. On board, um, there's 23.3 usable kilowatt hours per kilogram of hydrogen. There's 100 kilograms of hydrogen on board that can be ordered in different sizes based upon people's um, routes. That means there's 2,330 kilowatt hours on board of this truck and you can convert that to British thermal units. The easiest way to have a standard, and I'll explain why. So if there's 2,330 kilowatt hours on board, you assume you get about 
0.58 miles per kilowatt hour is what we're seeing in our testing. That means you're gonna have a 1,351 mile range on that truck before you have to stop and refill, and that's usable. So this is pretty cool. 100 kilograms of hydrogen on board at 13.5 miles per kilogram. Well, a, a kilogram of hydrogen has less energy in it than a diesel gallon of diesel. So now we have to take and say, okay, what does a diesel gallon have? So if there's 37.95 kilowatt hours per gallon of diesel, you divide that by 33 and a third. That means it takes 1.14 kilograms of hydrogen to equal a diesel gallon of diesel. So if you take 13.5 miles per kilogram of hydrogen, you come out times that by 1.14. Now you're 15.4 miles per, kilo, per, uh, per DGE of hydrogen. That means our truck is pretty much, if you look at the best diesels out there, 7.5 running in fleets nowadays. Some of them are down in the five range, six range. Some of them are a little higher. When you get out here in the Rockies, you'll be much lower. 7.5, the best ones out there. We actually have a full production product at 15.4 miles per, uh, per gallon, which is pretty incredible. That means we're using less energy to go we have essentially doubled the freight efficiency of our freight and the first people in the world to ever do that on a, on a diesel in the last uh, long time. So the power, there's some things about this, uh, the power, it's unbelievable acceleration. With an electric motor, it's instant. You don't have to wait for it. So you're talking about within 30 milliseconds, that truck will start to propel forward. You couldn't dream of having that with a, uh, with a diesel or any other truck. It's two to three mile, uh, times more miles per gallon, and that means less weight. I'm going to get into that. This is a really cool thing. Um, I've had a lot of people ask, how do you get so much, how are, you, how are you lighter? Every electric vehicle we've seen is heavier. So if you think about a diesel overall, you have a diesel engine. Thing weighs about 4,500 pounds it can, you know, for a big 15 liter. It can be up or down, depends on the brand. You got your emission equipment, tack another X amount of pounds, 1,000 pounds. Tack your transmission on there, another 1,000 or so pounds. Now you have three differentials. Tack those on there. Tack the drivetrain on there, all of a sudden the yokes, everything else, you're at 14,500 pounds just in that stuff. We've thrown every one of those out the window. They're gone. Everything that I just told you about is not on our truck. There's no, there's no diesel engine. There's no emission equipment. The drivetrain is integrated. It's like a locomotive, so you have your gear reduction straight to your half shaft. You've eliminated all the mechanical links, all the efficiency losses. And that's what we've done with the Nikola One. That's why we've been able to save the weight. This truck, spec for spec, let's say you spec a diesel and it's 19,000 pounds, our truck will come in right around about 17,000 pounds. If you spec a sleeper at 21,000 pounds, because you want every whistle, you know, every feature and everything else on there that you want, you'll get that thing down to about 19. That means we're going to be saving about 2,000 pounds over a diesel equivalent. This is a huge deal for drivers because the people that know trucking understand that every pound, if you're at full load, is worth about 50 cents. So what does that mean? That means 50 cents at 2,000 pounds, you can put on your truck every load. That's $1,000 on every load every day. Now an independent owner operator, say he does 25 loads a, a month, he's making an extra $25,000 a month. Now you start to see the incredible advantage of hydrogen and what we've done with electric over anybody else. The surround vision, these are some of the safety features. Surround vision, this thing will have 12 cameras on it, gives you the full ability to see all the way around the truck. This will give you collision avoidance. It'll actually try to prevent you from going into the lane with people. These features have been out on some cars. It's not like we're, you know, Nico's not invent, reinventing a, uh, everything, just some cool things, but the trucking industry has never adopted them. Now, we, now all these are coming into this. And the fact that we can control our electric motors, which are on every wheel, within about 30 milliseconds, that gives us a unique ability of safety that no other diesel could ever dream of having. So what does that mean? If we can stop a truck faster, a lot of the accidents with trucks are because they can't stop fast enough. So to give you an idea, with a regular diesel, it takes 0.45 seconds to engage the brake calipers on an air disc brake. So what does that mean? We can do it in 30 milliseconds. Just kind of give you an idea, it's almost 15 times faster than, you know, than, you know how, much, much faster than a diesel air disc brake. That means you can, I think it takes about 65 feet for that brake caliper to engage on a diesel. I could be wrong, but I think that's about the number. So at 65 feet, that's when you're stopping. With Nikola, you're stopping within a few feet, like three, four, five feet. You're already beginning that. Now you add in regenerative braking to the air disc brakes. Now you got to double the stopping power. Now let's say you're going down a hill and your, your airlines go out. How many drivers have died from airlines going out? You know what you have with the Nikola one? Full redundancy. We don't need airlines. We still have them for DOT compliance. Our regenerative braking can absorb up to 85% of the actual um, the braking lost normally through air disc brakes. 
So it means you're going down a hill, you're not riding your disc brakes. A normal set of disc brakes are gonna last about somewhere around 500,000 miles, give or take. With Nikola, we've been able to anywhere from double to triple that. 85% of the braking is gonna go into regen braking. And what does that mean? All that energy goes right back into your batteries to recharge them. You know, brakes get hot, why? Because it's, you know, it's energy loss. That's what heat is, is energy loss. Our heat goes straight into our batteries through current, recharges it. We have a few percent loss, nothing like brakes. And that's a really incredible part. You also have panoramic views all the way around the truck. Those panoramic views give you views of everything that's going on. That's, a, that's a, another safety feature that's awesome about this truck is when you're sitting in that driver's seat, you actually can look down and you can see the road. There's no longer this big gigantic hook that, hood that's nine feet in front of you. Um, some of the accidents that happen in trucking are the fact that people have to get in over, the, they'll climb up over the wheel. They have a steering wheel and a seat they gotta get into. And that becomes a very hard thing to get into the truck. A lot of the workman comp claims actually come from drivers that try to get in, they slip on the wheel, and there they are seven feet to a back, you know, landing straight on their back, breaking their collarbone or whatever, or even just getting hurt. Well, that puts a driver out, so how much does that cost them? Uh, who knows, a lot of money, too much money. So by having a mid-cab entry on this truck, we'll put stairs up here for you guys in the production, these, these handles come out. You can walk straight up into this just like you would your house. There's nothing in your way. You can stand up, a seven foot guy can stand in there and not hit his head. That gives you ability to load all your stuff, anything you want, and you don't have to worry about a seat being in your way or your steering wheel being in the way. That's one of the really cool patents that we have. Lower center of gravity in this truck. Most diesels, the center of gravity is, is right around above the frame rail. That's why there's a lot of tip overs. A lot of people have talked about how trucks, you'll, you'll see trucks just tipped over on the side of the road. Why is that? It's either from bad traction, anti-stability control didn't work right, or they, uh, they got into a position where they brake because a car cut them off, and they go into a jackknife, they tip over, or even wind tips over. We've seen our center of gravity with this truck lower by feet. I mean, not just one foot, but multiple feet. So you're talking anywhere from two to three feet lower center of gravity compared to a diesel. How do we do that? We put all the batteries in the frame rail. They're all built right down in the frame rail near the ground. That's gonna keep all that weight right there below the, below the frame rail. On this truck, we have 320 kilowatt hours of lithium on board. That may not mean anything to some of you guys, but let me explain it. Um, the top, the highest end model Tesla is a 100 kilowatt hour pack. It's called a P100 or a 100. That has 100 kilowatt hours of, of lithium on board. The Nikola has 320 kilowatt hours. That's 3.2 times more energy on board than the, the biggest Tesla they have. Why do we do that? It's for a massive buffer. It's so drivers can literally sit in their cab for days or weeks and not worry about, um, you know, not worry about having to turn on a, a generator. The fuel cell will keep it charged off automatically. And uh, the, the batteries act as a buffer, so no more idling laws. There's a lot of idling laws out there where cars can't, uh, trucks can't idle. Well, this removes it. Um, another one was torque vectoring, which is really cool. allows you to control the speed of every wheel. But mainly what I want to do is I want to I want to tell you a little bit about the Nikola once, and this is, my, this is what everyone came for. They came from all over the world. And this is my opportunity to unveil the Nikola One, which is a unique, a very unique opportunity for me. As, as Kevin Link stated, this thing started in our basement. This is not my first company. It's, uh, I can count on two hands how many companies I've started. Some were failures, some were successes. And this one is by far the best success we've ever had, and I'm very proud to present. For everybody that came from all over the world to come see this, this is the first time the Nikola One has ever been viewed in person by anyone except for our team. It's my pleasure to introduce the Nikola One to the world. Behind every milestone and every innovation, in every industry, craft, and trade, there exists a mover. Someone who gets things where they need to be and gets them there fast. These movers make the world we know possible. Our progress depends on their commitment to a job done well and a job done right. They bridge our networks and span our gaps. Where others see obstacles that defy success, movers see nothing but open road. They know the ins and outs of this country, every inch of asphalt from New York City to Los Angeles. They've long hauled through the Rockies and the Cascades, through the Shenandoah Valley and the Blue Ridge Mountains. They've seen shorelines, plains, cities, and suburbs. They've seen the Great Lakes and crossed the Mississippi countless times. 
They put tools in our reach. The tools we need to transform today's ambitions into the accomplishments of tomorrow. Movers jumpstart innovation. They move our dreams and our inspiration. They move our joy and our laughter. They move our shelter and our safety. They move the bonds that forge our identity. They move the common good we cherish in spite of division. They move the moments we share with our families around the dinner table. They move the world. But what moves them? For too long, we've asked the movers who make our dreams possible to depend on outdated technology. Technology that compromises the planet we work so tirelessly toward perfecting. For too long, we've asked them to sacrifice their health and their safety so we can have better access to the things that give our lives meaning. For too long, we've ignored the simple fact that what we move comes at a cost. A cost to our environment, to the movers, to our future, and to ourselves. It's easy to accept what we have without questioning how we got it. It's easy to accept modest change that's outpaced by the rate of our failures. When we accept these failures, we choose to fail the same people who, for more than half a century, have refused to fail us. Movers revolutionized our world. It's time we revolutionize theirs. For those who bravely stand at the crossroads of innovation and enterprise. For those who are prepared to give our children a moral compass and not just a roadmap. For those who wish to leave the planet better than it was when we found it. For those who are driven. For those who dare to reinvent. For those who dare to reimagine. <laughs> oh, that thing is so awesome. <laughs> oh, we've been waiting so long to show this to the world. You have no idea. It's, just, uh, it's hard to even contain uh, my emotion about this. You know, imagine going up against the biggest companies in the world. It wasn't against a, a, a neighborhood company or even a big company. We go up against the biggest in the world, people, 40, 50 billion dollar market caps. This is what we've been able to show the world we can do. But none of this would be possible without our partners that are so incredibly awesome. Got a lot of really incredible people here that I want to thank. Um, some of our partners that I want to go over are uh, first and foremost, I want to bring up the Ryder crew. Without them, we couldn't do it. If Ryder, can you come on up here? Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Just take one step here, okay? 
Um, I want to bring up um, also Pratt Miller and Meritor. Meritor were, go ahead and come on up guys. Thanks buddy. Thanks. Thanks buddy. Without Pratt and Miller and Meritor, this project would have been impossible. They are some of the most incredibly talented people in the world. Meritor helped design our full independent suspension. It's the only semi truck like it in the world that's completely independent suspension. This will give the driver a much better ride, less driver fatigue, a stiffer frame, which means more stability, but while still maintaining a much rider, uh, you know, softer ride. It also allowed us to get rid of all the differentials, which was such a huge part of our project. I couldn't have done it without them. Um, Pratt & Miller is an incredible company that also helps us with our UTV and the truck. These guys are uh, some of the best engineers out there. They run a lot of race divisions. I uh, have a lot of incredible people. They helped us with the truck and I couldn't thank them enough. But most importantly, uh, we have these great partners. We could not have done this without the Nikola team. So it's my opportunity to welcome um, everyone here that is with Nikola. Why don't you come up on the stage? Thanks guys. It's a very unique team, all entrepreneurs, very driven, and uh, people that were willing to take risks on us when everyone else thought it was crazy. Uh, we did it. I'm, uh, I'm very, very thankful for everyone. So um, I just want to tell you from, from myself, thank you for working so hard for me and for our company and being part of the Nico team. Thanks everyone. You guys can take your seat, but thank you so much, okay? There's a couple of things I want to go over. Um, one of them is that you guys will be able to come up on the stage. Um, we have an incredible cater here, R&R Barbecue. You guys will be able to eat all you want. It's going to be a great dinner. Drinks are everywhere. So in, you know, you'll be able to enjoy yourself. We're going to have security at the, at, at the front and, and side of the stage, primarily because we don't want too many people up on the stage at once. So we're going to let some people on, and, and, the, and when other people leave, we'll let more on. Um, that's uh, so you'll be able to go inside the cab. Like I said, you'll be able to look at this entire truck. We have a big stair system coming out for it, so it's safe getting up and on, up and off. Um, so you guys will be able to mingle here for as much time as you want, have as much fun as you want. I really want you to look at that truck. Um, the cab itself, like I said, you'll be able to go inside. We have a little chain on the front to keep people from hitting the controls because they do work. But you will be able to see all the screens actually lit up and working, which is awesome. Um, before I do that, what I'd like to do is I want to bring. Um, I want to bring up the governor of uh, Utah who is here tonight. If you can come up, Gary, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'm going to give uh, Mr. Governor here a nice little tour of the truck before everyone gets up so his security details can get him um, onto his uh, next event. But I wanted to thank everyone for coming out to this event. It means more to me than anything. And this truck will come to market, I can promise you that. For every doubter out there that said that there's no way this is true. Abs how can that be possible? We've done it. It's my pleasure to actually let you guys enjoy the night, see the truck, know it's real, touch it, feel how sturdy it is. You're gonna see that this is a real truck. This is not a pusher. Thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate it, thank you. Come here, buddy. <laughs> 